Welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church for our virtual online worship this weekend of September the 6th. We're celebrating this weekend a communion time on Sunday morning here in the sanctuary. For those of you at home and participating online, we will be celebrating our Agape Meal Feast today as well. This is like a communion celebration, so if you have your own bread and juice, um, have that with you during this time of our worship that you can partake with us. We thank you for joining us in our time of worship. We are glad you can be with us. Today I, I am joined with uh, Elaine Stuckey and David Elliott and Matt Cole, and I'm Jeffrey Zalatoris, the pastor here at Harmony Church. We thank you for joining us, and we uh, continue to offer our worship services each weekend, the 10 o'clock service on Sunday mornings here in the sanctuary, but also our Facebook and YouTube services are premiering at 9 o'clock on Sundays and available throughout the week after that. We also will be offering our Wednesday evening prayer and Bible studies, both in the sanctuary and by Zoom connection at 7 o'clock. We'll be gathering this Wednesday. We have a busy week upcoming here this week at the church with our activities and the boards of the, of the congregation. Monday night, our trustees will be meeting at 6.30 here at the church. Tuesday morning at 11.30, the United Methodist Women will be gathering in the Memorial Hall. Our church council gathers Tuesday evening at 7, and on Thursday, this, uh, the Staff Parish Relations Committee will be meeting at 7 as well. And uh, next Saturday is the annual conference for the Baltimore-Washington Conference, and uh, we will also have some folks gathering um, for that time as well. Please keep us in prayer for the wisdom, for the guidance of this church during this season as we are looking forward to the fall. Also, I want to remind you that uh, next Sunday, uh, Mac McWilliams will have his, his car here and is prepared to take newspapers for recycling. So if you're here during the week and wish to drop off recycling for that, um, Mac, Mac can take care of that the following weekend. Good morning, and let us prepare our hearts for worship.
morning and welcome to Harmony United Methodist Church. I'm Matt Cole. Now we'll have our call to worship inspired by Psalm 149 verses 1 through 5. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let the faithful congregation sing praises to God. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of the Most High rejoice. Let them praise God's name with dancing. Let, the, let them make pleasing melodies with instruments and voice. God takes pleasure in people of faith. God adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful celebrate with glory. Let us sing for joy. Praise, praise be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Testament reading from the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it, eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, 
On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. May you be blessed in this holy word. Thanks be to God. Testament lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, reading verses 15 through 22. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. May you be blessed in hearing this holy word. Thanks be to God. Indeed, thanks be to God for these lessons today. Thanks be to God for the community of faith where God sprang the peoples out of Egypt and that we continue to remember that very story even in this time. That Passover is the time an ancient Jewish festival that continues all the way to our time today. And Passover recalls God's work to rescue and redeem the people Israel from a state of bondage and oppression in Egypt. It is a story of darkest night, but it is not a story that ends in despair on that darkest night. Instead, it is a story of God's light becoming visible in that darkest night, a light of hope that brightens with time, a light of redemption for a people. And this story of Passover that is told again and again is a story of community and of discipling. 
that in today's lesson we read from Exodus, why the people of Israel kept that day of Passover. It is to be a day of community and family gathering, and it is a day of remembering. The story teaches us to gather together, to gather as community, as family, and in gathering that we recognize and give thanks to God, and that we are humble before God and humble in our community. The story teaches us that before God, we are equals with one another. And this day of remembrance, this Passover, recalls the beginnings of God's rescue and redemption of that poor and oppressed people, that in time they would mature to know freedom and to have lives that live the promise of hope. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts this day be acceptable to you. O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Days of remembering God's goodness are meant to remind us that God's grace is with us and to build up hope in our hearts. Days of remembrance of God's goodness are meant to keep us humble before God and with one another to renew our commitment to love God and to love each other. This week for us marks a time of remembrances in the very fabric of our social lives. We begin this week celebrating laborers, workers. We give thanks for the work of women and men who provide food and clean water for healthy living, for those who build up communities, for those who provide essential services for life. And in this year, we are remembering and rethinking what essential work and essential services look like. That in our time of humility this year, we not take work of women and men for granted, and that we understand so many people before who were taken for granted are now known as essential workers. May we celebrate their labors and the work of their hands and minds. But this week of remembrance is also a week in which we remember and recall the sadness from the horrifying events of September 11, 2001. This week we take time to remember and pray for the families of the victims of that tragic day, those who still relive moments of their grief. We pray in remembrance for peace and healing for those who risked their health and their very lives to rescue and clean up after those events. Yet they are the ones who suffered traumas that stemmed from those days and still haunt many. If we choose this week, to recall and to remember, then both the sadness of September 11th and the laughters on Labor Day can lead us to reflect on God and to reflect on the value of community in our lives. For feelings of sadness as well as feelings of joy can open our hearts to God and we can witness to God's mercy and grace that both sadness and joy remind us of the ties that connect us with our communities. Jesus knows this about us. Jesus knows us as social beings, as creatures of community. This didn't require any special training for Jesus. It is evident in the way we live and in our experiences of life. We see it, we observe it ourselves. I suspect that in Jesus' time, though, the reliance of community members on one another was even greater than it is in our era. And so it should not be a surprise to any of you that many of Jesus' teachings concerned living in communities. Many of the letters of the New Testament concern living in communities. It also should not be a surprise when I say that disciples of Christ are invited by God to be part of a faith community. The Gospels make clear that Jesus Christ expressly sent disciples out into the world to preach Christ's grace, to baptize, to make disciples, 
to teach repentance and forgiveness of sins, and to echo God's love back to God and to our neighbors. We are not to stay isolated or alone, but to be in community as Christian disciples. The gospel message for us, then, is a message of community, gathering together in festival and celebration times in remembrance of God's mercy and in salvation, and to serve as a community for the needs of one another in community, and a place to build one another up in faith, even in our own periods of darkness. Yes, Christian discipleship requires our private time of prayer, our private time of reflection, meditation, and attention on God, but we cannot neglect community discipleship when we're speaking of spiritual growth and our faith development. This is all part of Christian discipling. What it is we are called to do and live as women and men baptized by water and the Spirit. So while our faith community is an essential part of our Christian discipleship, our gospel lesson today reminds us that even followers of Christ will not agree on everything, and they may even cause sin against one another. And while painful to hear, it is a truth most of us have probably witnessed. Yet discipleship is community, and community requires hearts of humility. As Christ's disciples, we can expect to have a great deal in common with one another. Yet there is much we have that is different and not in common. For we come from different backgrounds and walked our own faith journeys with God. And recognizing our unique backgrounds and experiences, John Wesley said this, As to all opinions which do not strike at the root of Christianity, we think and let think. To Wesley, many of the things that church members worry about should not be cause for argument or long-standing conflicts. Wesley wrote, think and let think. For if you get angry at the church for buying blue carpeting, not beige carpeting, ask yourself, is color choice for carpeting at the root of our Christian witness? John Wesley said this also about our faith. In the essentials of faith, unity. In the non-essentials of faith, liberty. And in all things of faith, charity. John Wesley knew, just as Jesus knew, people do not all agree on all things. And so those things we must agree on are few and limited in number, but most things, even topics of our church life, are things we don't have to agree with absolutely in order to live as Christian community. So as disciples, we must keep humble with one another, for much of what we do in community does not strike at the root of Christianity. And so with humility, we must accept our personal preferences do not have to match the decisions of others, the opinions or methods of others, or their personal preferences. Jesus knew a thing or two about the human mind and the human condition. Jesus knew that communities were not always in perfect accord. Communities of people will have moments of disagreement, even moments of hostility. This is true even of churches. And despite all the lessons from Jesus and from Paul's letter and even from others like John Wesley, we see this is true, but we also know that humility can diffuse hostility. Now, discipleship also requires community, true community, in equality, where members see each other equally as children of God. That most days we can stay in accord with one another, and most days the inequalities be it between us are not visible. But those inequalities can become destructive in conflicts. 
that as Jesus began his teaching, if one member of the church sins against you, he taught to find that person and to talk privately with that person, resolving the differences in private, but that is only possible when the people involved see each other as equals, brothers and sisters equally in Christ. So as you go as equals, when you seek out one another, do so to resolve your conflicts. Yet many people struggle to resolve conflicts because of the perceived inequalities, that a person of power is often unwilling to accept the word of somebody perceived to be inferior. A person without power is often afraid to speak up to a person of power. So when in a community, even in a church community, that we can be bound and tied to structures of powerful persons and silent persons, in those places the powerful voices often override the quieter ones, making them feel rejected and unimportant. Such inequalities do not resolve conflicts, but only extend conflicts, breeding resentment. Friends, in church, Christ is the head of the body. No one else is the head. All others in the body are equal parts of that body. And this is like the story in the Passover, where the lamb was divided in proportion to the number of people who would eat of it, not by their station or their value in that community or in that family. No one is considered superior to receive a double portion of the lamb. All receive the same portion. All are equal in receiving. Likewise, in the church, all are equal as disciples before God. For without the acceptance of equality among disciples, there can be no true resolution of argument or conflict as Jesus had taught. Yet when we are humble and accept our lives as equals in community, Jesus taught that the best, the least harmful way of resolving our conflicts is to address it in private. And for a community built on the foundation of a grace-filled and grace-forgiving God, her members should disciple, disciple themselves to become more grace-extending and more forgiving. Therefore, discipleship as community means we are able to forgive one another. We know Jesus has, has invited us to be people of forgiveness, for Jesus has forgiven again and again, fully and completely. We have the assurance of forgiveness from God through Christ Jesus. But to live according to the image and likeness of God, we too need to carry the mantle of forgiveness with us. We must prepare ourselves to forgive those who trespass against us. Not once, not seven times, but 77 times. Without end until that forgiveness is complete. Discipleship is community. And we know communities have their ups and their downs, good days and struggling days. So commitment to living in community, it requires us to practice humility and equality and forgiveness with one another. And despite the low points, when we practice those qualities of humility, equality, and forgiveness, we learn to live in grace with each other. And by that we know that God is among us. For Jesus taught that when the disciples come together, they come together not just in agreement, but also in harmony of our hearts, that if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. And we know God will be with us when we have gathered together in our hearts as equals and humble men and women of faith. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. As the Church of Jesus Christ for this world, our journey is a journey of discipleship. We do this in part on our own, but in part we journey this discipleship with our faith community. 
So in truly grace-filled communities, the principles of humility, equality, and forgiveness are lived out by her members. And only then can we truly be gathered without sinful distractions together in the name of God and know that God is among us. So this week, a week of remembrance, let us practice humility and equality and forgiveness as we pray for those around us, those who are in time of grief and sadness, and those who are in a period of joy and celebration. This week, let us reflect and remember God's grace and mercy. Thanks be to God. Amen. children of God, we continue to offer our prayers together this day. Join in our prayers of intercession. For the remembrance of God's goodness as the foundation for our bright hope for tomorrow, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For Christian families and congregations to practice humble forgiveness and courageous grace, we pray. Christ, have mercy. For wisdom to guide leaders in our communities and around the world, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For the healing of the nations in turbulent times, we pray. 
Christ, have mercy. And for the joys uplifting our hearts and the concerns weighing on our souls, we bring all before you and ask your blessing on each according to your goodness, we pray. Lord, have mercy. We will continue our time of worship with our agape meal. This is, in form at least, like our communion gathering, a time of remembrance that we celebrate this first weekend in September. We begin with an invitation to the meal. Christ our Lord invites all to his table who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. And as a forgiven people of Christ, we are people who know God's peace, and may we share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. This day we also offer our gifts that we might share in God's grace upon us, that we return a portion of that grace and those gifts God has imparted on us back to the church where we might continue to share the ministries of Harmony United Methodist Church here in Marlow, Falling Waters, and beyond. We give thanks to God for what God has granted us, and now let us hear our doxology to prepare our hearts. life to our being, hope in our hearts, and lightens our burdens. We offer you our thanks and the first fruits of our labors. Receive our gifts as a sign of our faith, hope, and love in you. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. We continue with our words of our great thanksgiving. We give thanks to you, God, for mercy and justice and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, holy God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who was anointed by your spirit and preached good news to the poor proclaimed release to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce the time had come 
when you would save your people. With love and faith, we remember the Godhead whom Jesus called Abba, Father, as architect and creator of heaven and earth. With love and faith, we remember Jesus who taught, healed, proclaimed, and sojourned with all manner of people and who died and was resurrected for the sake of human salvation. And with love and faith, we remember the Holy Spirit who breathes life and mercy over creation and who comforts and encourages us in faith, hope, and love. Let us together proclaim with confidence the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And may the triune God, life-giving and life-renewing source, Savior, and Spirit bless you with grace and bless your agape meal of food and drink like the bread and wine in remembrance of Jesus' act of pure love for us. Therefore, at this time, eat and drink of your agape meal. As you do, remember, you are united through Christ with sisters and brothers throughout the world. And together with the whole body of Christ, receive Jesus' love that he freely gave to you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for Jesus who gave himself to us as we remember his pure agape love for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends of Christ, remember that you are a beloved child of God in the community of the body of Christ. Be blessed and empowered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as you go out into the mission field. Amen. Amen.